Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. As a part of this, we are at the Chapter 3, Testing in Virtual Environments, uh, looking at 3.2, Testing in Zill Test Environments. And uh, this is the last topic of this chapter and also the last tutorial of this chapter that is talking about 3.2.4 comparison of the Zill test environments and this is the part 3 of this. As a part of this tutorial we are trying to explore finally some more things which might be a good practice and best uh, disciplines which you can be following as a part of selecting the test environments necessary at any point of time. So here we are trying to understand more about classifications of the Zill test environment like mill, sill, hill in the general V model. So if you basically assume your V model at any point of time, you do know that uh, from the foundation level syllabus that of course uh, the V model has the left side of all about designing and creating the work products which might be necessary in order to determine the test cases. And on the right side of the V model, you have the validation processes like conducting unit level test cases and definitely conducting integration system and acceptance levels. The same way here, we are trying to compare that what kind of activities can happen in different environments and what would be the most, uh, most important uh, recommendation at any point of time. So the technical system design, which is referred to the basic design which is created for the automotive testing or uh, test products, is on the left hand side of the V model of course so on the left side we do have technical system design which is being created and of course reviewed at any point of time the tester can test this design with a mill test environment that is from the point of reviewing or making sure the design is up to the mark or not and measuring them with the model specifications if the test item and the mill test environments are further developed the tester can also execute the component and integration test with this test environment. So it just simply means that if the models uh, are created in, in an even better way, then of course, some of the test executions can be pre-pawned and definitely doing testing executions much earlier in the life cycle can definitely result in finding good defects much earlier, which would be cheaper in order to fix them. So yes, if in case your model or, or MIL test environment is created in much better way, you can push your component and integration test earlier using the mill test environment. But when it comes to specifically the SIL test environment, if single component of the test items are programmed and compiled, they can be definitely tested. Even typical tests of the SIL test environments are component integration testing. Right. On the right side of the V model, we start with the component and integration testing, which is generally recommended to be conducted as a part of the SIL test environment. These can be found on the right hand side of the V model, which is quite generic from the foundation. We do understand that. In system test, certain functionalities of the test items have been entirely developed. And of course, we are talking about a lot of things to be put together in terms of a system entirely. And this can be executed as a part of the hill test environment. So what we are trying to understand here, of course, the component in integration can be dealt with software in the loop. And in terms of making sure that if these criteria are being met and the objectives are being met or not. But when it comes to the other side, that what about the product risk? What about the overall uh, functionality of a system? Then, of course, we would have a most closer environment to this. That is the hill environment hardware in the loop will definitely assist you with the system testing. Additionally, uh, with correct assignments of the test environment to the test levels, the entire test process can be optimized according to the following three aspects. So of course, it is our responsibility to determine being a test manager that what type of environment and what type of test objective should be covered as a part of different test environments, which we have covered in our previous tutorial part two. Now, here we are trying to see further more aspects which can be targeted in order to meet the overall expectations by allocating and assigning the right set of environments at any point of time. So, the three factors are minimizing the product risk. That's obviously very important to minimize the risk as early as possible. So, of course, finding test level specific failure types could be helpful in order to minimize the product risk. Like, for example, performance test at system level within the hill environment. So you don't have to wait for entire system testing to get over. The non-functional testing can definitely be pre pawned and can be conducted much earlier in the life cycle using the hill environment. And definitely you can reduce a lot of your product risk much earlier while conducting your system testing itself. Minimizing the test cost, that is from the point of for every test type, the adequate test levels are required 
transfer of tests to earlier less costly and virtual test level so if you think that there are certain aspects of the testing which can be conducted at mil that is mill test environment then do recommend them to do that here because it might not be always possible that all the tests should be pushed to the hill environment being more realistic because you may have a lot of work to be done when it comes to the hill test environment and it will, it will turn into more complications more complex executions and finding defects could be really really complicated so what we try to do is we try to push things much earlier in the life cycle if you think that there is a scope and certain things of the test executions like unit and measurement of certain parameters can be done much earlier in the life cycle please push them to much earlier test environments the third one is conformity to the standards of course we are talking about meeting and uh uh, following and complying with these standards which you are following so of course in the method tables if you remember of the iso 26262 standard the test environments are recommended depending on the acel levels all right so yes acel will definitely help you to combine together with 26262 as method tables to determine what techniques can be used for different activities well that's all from this particular tutorial team. Definitely we have covered all the detailed information about the ZIL test environments covering the different uh, types of test environment and uh, giving you a quick output that how exactly these environments will be helpful at any point of time to conduct several levels of testing. So there are a lot of details. So equally expect a good amount of questions to be appearing and good quality of question appearing in the examination. Anyways, that's all from this particular tutorial team. We'll be getting back to you with sample questions on this chapter in the next tutorial. Stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.